when you send emails in PHP and you want to know when your recipients open your emails. Here's how it works. When composing the email, include an image such as your logo, or if you want to be sneaky, a single white pixel. When the recipient opens the email and downloads the logo from your server, that's when you can save the timestamp of when the email was opened. The first thing we need is a table that keeps track of the emails that we sent. I've created an emails table. We need an email ID as the primary key. Make sure auto increment is on. We need the email address of the recipient, a creation date and time of when the record was created, a read date and time of when the email was opened. Make sure this one is nullable and the default is no. When this is no, that means the email has not been opened. Otherwise, it will be filled with a timestamp. You can add other stuff to this table, but minimally we have what we need. Let's take a look at the code that's going to send the email. For the demo, I'm sending the email to a one-time use email address. I'm connecting to my database using information from my configuration file, which I included up here. Yours would obviously be different from mine. Before sending the email, I'm creating an entry in my emails table passing in the recipient's email address and the creation timestamp. You can use the database to fill in the create date time, or you can use PHP to create the date time. I choose to use PHP. So here I am getting the current timestamp and I make sure to set the time zone that I want. I execute the SQL statement, passing in the variables that I just created. After inserting the email record, I retrieve my email ID. Now I construct the body of my email with some HTML. I include an image tag pointing to the page that's going to serve my logo. And I pass in my email ID and also the creation timestamp. Here I'm passing in my email ID and I'm converting my creation timestamp into a Unix integer. In my logo.php file, which we'll take a look at in a second, I'm using these two pieces of information to update the database. Since the email is going to be sent over the internet and the recipient is going to retrieve the logo through the internet, that's why I'm including an internet accessible link here. If I use local host here, it's not going to work because the email is not going to be able to reach this page. Be sure to change this link to your own website. My email is ready to be sent. I'm creating a new mail object. I'm using the PHP mailer library to do the sending. You probably have your own way of sending emails, but if you don't, you can go check out PHP mailer. Here I'm just setting up the mail object by giving it the host port, my username, password, etc. Then I'm adding the email address of the recipient. I set the body of my email and then I send it. Okay, let's execute this code. I have my send mail PHP code deployed to my site. I'm gonna hit enter. The email is sent. Let's see if a database entry has been created. I'm gonna switch over to the data tab. We can see a new entry has been created with email ID 14 sending to my one-time use account and it was just created. And as expected, the read date time is null. Now let's go check our email. This is the website that I'm using to create my one-time use email address. Let me scroll down. These three emails from the bottom is from my earlier testing. This top one here should be the latest one. Let me click on it. It does look like the same as the bottom ones. So here it went and downloaded the logo. We expect the read date to be filled in when this logo is downloaded. Now let me go back to my database. Right now it's no, let me refresh this page. There we go, now we know when the user opened our email. Now let's take a look at the code that's serving up this image. The code is in my logo.php page. Up here, I'm checking if email ID and create timestamp is passed in from the URL. If it is, I grab a copy of it. I'm using the set timestamp function to convert the Unix timestamp back into a date object. I'm connecting to my database. I'm creating my read date object as the current time. The SQL updates the email table and sets the read date to the read date up here. 
where the record matches the email ID, the creation date, and that read date is null. We need read date is null here in the where statement so that the next time the recipient opens the same email, it doesn't trigger the update statement again. Now, why do we need to pass in the create date? Why not just the email ID? Passing in just the email ID will work. However, it's pretty easy to guess the email ID. Somebody can guess the email ID and trigger our updates, which we don't want. By including the creation date time, it makes it very hard to guess both the ID and the create date combination. It's not impossible, but it's probably not worthwhile. Now I execute the update statement, passing in the variables. This code reads the logo, sets the header to image, sets the content length, and then uses the read file function to read the logo and output it to the browser. And we make sure to have an exit statement here so we're not accidentally outputting any white spaces. Outputting anything other than this image itself will not work. Okay, so now you know who reads your stuff or not. If this tutorial is helpful to you, be sure to help me out with a like and subscribe. Thank you very much.